Wahlbergs. That's our word. Brought to you by Bipcot and Discord. <sighs> Still need to get things working. And I'm here with Seamus from Freedom Tunes. Of course, he's Jim Jesus. No, no. Hello. This Hello. is Stefan. Oh. Hello. This oh. Is oh. Oh. Stefan. Oh. 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 Stefan. Yes. How are you, sir? Yes. How are you? Good respect. Uh, I heard. Yeah, I am. Yeah, okay. So, are you a libertarian? Ah. Uh. No, it's uh, you're asking me these questions like, I, is Stefan a libertarian? Is he not a libertarian? No, Stefan's not really a libertarian. No, it's, ah, uh, it's, yeah. Libertarianism and libertarians believe in the non aggression principle, but I'm the only one making any sacrifices. Tell me about the DMCA. <laughs> So we should. We're going to talk about this 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 terrible video. I can't believe you brought up the DMCA, dude. That's not cool. <laughs> you can't say that in front of Snap. He's very self conscious. Yeah, um, very self conscious. Yes, yeah, well, I'm very self conscious about the DMCA. The DMCA is not an argument. Yeah. You know what the A? You know what the M A stands for? Martin argument because they did it. It was a typo. It was supposed to be D M D N C A. D M C N A. It's a C A. So. The A stands for argument, but it's not one. So I, I I watched it again. I had already made a video about this, but I watched it again this morning while while you were eating, waiting for you to get hooked while I was setting everything up and listening to it again. Man, it is painful. Molyneux made a video. I'm bearing the lead. Molyneux made a video called um, Why I Was Wrong About Libertarians. Is that right? Is that what it's called? Yes, that is what it's called. Okay, I'll put it in the description. So you, you can check the description box. Uh, Another uh, an alternative title is the alt right pays more. <laughs> Pretty much, yeah. Uh, yeah. But I watched it again and I took notes because I, I I had accidentally deleted my other notes, so I got through about forty minutes of it again. Um, but as I'm going through it, I'll kind of remember a lot of the other stuff that was in it as well. Um, mm-hmm. You watched it and you con did you contact me after I was talking about it or did you try to? No, show- I just watched it and okay. then I, I checked it out and. One of my friends posted uh, in the Anarchy Admin page uh, that Stefan had Anarchy released this admin? video, and he just—that's funny. Like Anarchy Ball, <laughs> Anarchy Ball Admin oh, okay. people. Yeah, yeah. Uh, and so he posted something in there. It was basically just a picture of Stefan's face, and it's like why I was wrong about libertarians, and I, I was like, well, it was only a matter of time, honestly. Yeah. Um, so I checked out the video and it was just as limp dicked as I thought it would be. <laughs> the arguments were non existent. Not an argument. Oh, they, um, were, they were they were everywhere. The non arguments were everywhere. And it's funny kind of watching a lot of the stuff bots, the, the libertarian stuff bots like yeah, he's making some interesting points. He's like, no, you're not really thinking. Like, and I used to do the yeah. same thing. Like when I was a fan of Stefan Molyneux, like I would I would I would listen to what he was saying. And everything kind of sounds good in the first few minutes, and then he kind of leads you down this garden path of just non-arguments, <laughs> and you're just yeah. a really bad arguments. Well, and here's the thing: Steph can make some good points now and then, but yeah. he's always claimed that the core principle of libertarianism is non-aggression, and he does nothing to refute it in his video. All he does is this narcissistic grandstanding where he claims that no one else in the movement cared about liberty as much as he does. So he's justified in being a self-righteous prick who goes out there and claims that people weren't doing enough for him to make this worth his while. That he was the only person being philosophically consistent. So for a video that's titled Why I Was Wrong About Blank, it's very arrogant. You'd think there'd be some level of humility. (laughs) Sorry, guys. I was wrong. I was incorrect. Here's why. What he should have called it was why libertarians are wrong, and I'm still right somehow, despite the fact that I was one. That would have been a more accurate title, given the content of the video. Well, he never actually said that he wasn't a libertarian. And if I don't say that, I'm going to get, like, every Spurg Steph fan. He never actually said that. But he's really good at, like, blowing dog whistles so that only certain people hear things. He's really good at that. Here's the thing about Steph. He did a video called Why I Was Wrong About Christians or Why I Was Wrong About Christianity, mm-hmm. and he's still an and atheist. Socialism. Yeah. And he's still, so it is technically possible that he's still a libertarian. Yeah. But he didn't just say in the course of the video, it, it, I think he, he was intentionally ambiguous so he could pander to both his audiences, which is the libertarians and the alt right people. 
But there were a couple claims he made that were just ridiculous. The things that he labels uh, or blames on libertarianism were Absurd. ridiculous. He, he said that libertarians white knight feminism. <laughs> what? What they, the hell are like, you talking about? Dude, I run like the a 10 libertarian libertarians channel. at C4SS and like, you know, Kathy Reisenwitz is friends and that's it. <laughs> like everyone else like does mine. it. Yeah. <laughs> I run a libertarian YouTube channel and it's not massive. Yeah, it's only about 10,000 subscribers at this point. But the reason I'm bringing this up is because I started making content purely about libertarianism. But when I started releasing stuff about feminism, I only got positive feedback. Yeah. There's, I have gotten maybe one, a, a small handful of negative comments on the videos that I do lampooning feminism. Yeah. And I don't think any of them are from libertarians either. So I don't know what the hell he's talking about. I have never gotten pushback from, like, even, even like MK, who we had on like the last show. And I, there was a little bit of pushback because she was talking about feminism, but I don't think people understood like she, her brand of feminism is really not repugnant at all. I mean, she said like one thing that looking back, I was like, okay, that's probably not true. And that was something about rape statistics. And it was, it wasn't that she was like wrong. It was just that like, she was using one uh, thing that was right. One, one study that was right while there was like a whole bunch of other studies that were wrong because any methodology would change the statistics anywhere from 2% to 90%. And, yeah. you know, it really kind of depends on it because, like, there's no real way to determine whether or not rape statistics, are, you know, are, are falsely no, claimed. No, I, I there's no way that. to know. Well, but here's another thing. Sort of getting back to Stefan Molyneux's video and this claim he made about feminism. As you mentioned, the pushback that you've gotten has been when you had somebody advocating for feminism on your podcast. Yes. Yeah. Anytime we, anytime you've come on and bashed feminist or social justice warriors, we, it's just been, it's just been nothing but praise. You know, maybe some alt writers are like, "You're not bashing them enough," but that, yeah, that's yeah, exactly. But that's it. And I, on alt writers, I agree with you on that. <laughs> I honestly do. We can do more, and we're gonna definitely be discussing the alt right to a certain extent. And here's the thing: it's not that I hate or detest the alt right or have anything against people on the alt right. It's that I do a little, I do a has, little bit. I have some alt right friends, a little, but a little bit, yeah, they're annoying. No, yeah, me too. I mean, I've I have quite a few alt right friends too. But my thing isn't to say that I hate the alt right and it's terrible. My thing is to say Stefan Molyneux has essentially proven himself to be cold and opportunistic and calculating <laughs> with his recent switch from libertarianism to the alt right because I don't think he sincerely holds allegedly, your principles. I think he's scamming switch. you in the same way that he was scamming and playing libertarians for the past decade. Yeah. So I wrote some notes here and there's some really kind of like fun stuff in here. Like I've already kind of deconstructed a lot of it um, and you can go and watch that. It was, it, it was kind of on the cuff or whatever. Cause I was doing laundry <laughs> watching it. And then, then I put my stuff in the dryer and I was like, okay, I'm recording this now. Um, <laughs> <laughs> and it still was in my laundry clothes. So I like, I was, I didn't even have coffee yet either way. Wow. So, you're productive. You did your laundry before you had coffee. That's ridiculous. Yeah, I it, can't, it was nuts. Anyway, so uh, some of the things like he said that were really crazy, like he said that no one buys diet books from fat people. He, he should know because he's like a big fan of Dr. Phil, but Dr. Phil released a diet yeah. book in 2003 when he was a little pudgy guy, you know, uh, he's still kind yeah. of, he's not exactly the thinnest person. Uh, he's, I don't wouldn't call him fat now, but back then he was fat. Yeah. Um, yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah, that's right. I forgot about that. Somebody commented saying something along those lines like you said people don't buy mm -hmm. diet books from fat people but yeah. dr phil's fat and stuff just comments no he's not <laughs> <laughs> now he's white knighting for, <laughs> he's <laughs> white knighting for no. dr phil <laughs> no he's not fat <laughs> you go back like type in dr phil 2003 and then like look at the videos like from the clips from 2003 he's he's a little fat guy um he's a little chubby yeah, I like Doctor Phil, but he was he's a I don't. Boy. <laughs> I think he was, I don't I'm, know enough about him. I'm just I'm just uh, an easygoing guy. What can I say? I would never say that he's a quack ever, but uh, I do like ducks. So he, he said that um quack 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 quack. Uh, <laughs> he said fat people talking about diet. Uh, if you if fat people talk about dieting, like no one listen to him, and you're hurting the diet. Like I was a fat guy. Oh, I'm still am fat. But I'm I'm way less fat. So, but I, as a fat person, I still talk about diets, and people do listen, and they do take my advice. 
It's because they can actually see me losing weight. They actually go like, oh, you've lost weight. Like, what are you doing? So fat people can. That's a good point. Yeah. It, it just outright fat people talking about dieting. Or, you know, you could say like, you know, hey, I'm 300 pounds, but I was 400 pounds. You should probably take a listen, you know, if you want to, you know, add a couple more years to your life. You know, I'm still doing that. Or Yeah, that's a good point. I, 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 I think just got tired of being there. skinny. I like cheeseburgers. But here's how I did lose all that weight when I was skinny. Yeah. 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 I can totally see that. Yeah. I can totally and, see that. But, you know, we can also t- turn that around and say, all right, you li- you want us to live our lives by the NAP and never use government force or any kind of force to shut down people. But didn't you, you DMCA someone not too long ago? <laughs> like, what, what was that about? Oh, you know? yeah. Right? Yeah. All right. No, here's what pissed me off. And you just triggered me, Jim. And I'm going to dive right in here. Stefan Molyneux starts his video with this self-righteous rant about he's the, uh, he's the only person. Let me start over because – I stumbled over my words. That makes me feel bad. So we're going to do a double take here. And tell me when you're ready. Jake. Action. You ready? Yeah. I'm ready. So, so, Stefan, so Stefan opens his video with this self-righteous rant about how he's the only person in the libertarian community who's making any sacrifices. And my only thought was, what about all the kids who left their families mm-hmm. because you told them to you pseudo psychological quack? with your garbage theories that were all contingent upon one another and related to the non-aggression principle. You told these impressionable young men who admired you because you're charismatic individuals that the best way they can live out the values of freedom was to leave their parents. And people did it. And one kid killed himself. Yeah, well, allegedly. <laughs> because and of I'm it, yeah. sorry. You heard how triggered, triggered and upset I got? But I think I have a yeah. point here. And... You know, if you're going to come out and say, I was wrong about libertarians, at least give an apology to those people. Because when you were wrong about libertarianism, you made money. When yeah. they were wrong about libertarianism, they lost their families. Yeah. And there's a lot of people who, who have come out. Like, you can just go on to the FDR forum, if FDR Liberated forum, uh, FDRLiberated.com. And there's a lot of people who will post, like, I. there's, like, former... Uh, members section where you can actually sit there and read people who said like you know hey i was involved in this i just thought it was a neat little libertarian podcast or whatever and then turned out like i ended up dumping all my family and i totally regretted it and i'm, I'm so happy that i'm with my status friends now and family members that i threw away you know but my life was so much worse <laughs> you know like only only associating with other fdr members and living in poverty and not huh, taking any, any other kind of handouts or whatever. But, you know, Molyneux can take handouts, right? Stefan Molyneux was sitting there talking about all the sacrifices he made. He didn't make sacrifices. He made money. Why was he sitting on 100K in Bitcoin at one point? Oh, he's, no, if he, he was struggling is. so hard. Yelling, yelling at a kid who only donated $1. Some <clears> broke <throat> college kid wrote a letter saying, I'm donating. I don't have much money, so here's a dollar. Dude, I have given less Two homeless people who showed more gratitude than that man did, and he's sitting in hun- on hundreds of thousands of dollars. Yeah, I, I wonder what that is right now. I'm actually looking it up. Um, FD, no, that's not it. And so here's the thing: I'm not just doing this because I want to bash the alt right or I want to bash libertarianism or whatever. You could, you know, I want to bash this. everything. Okay, don't don't. I want to bash everything. I know, <laughs> honestly. Here's the, no, Stefan Molyneux can change his positions. That That's fine. You know, anyone can change their positions if they really feel they've had sufficient evidence to do so. But this seems opportunistic, and his video was very arrogant. It was very condescending. And coming from a person who has had other people make tremendous sacrifices for him, he seemed a little bit too okay with having been wrong. Yeah. Didn't seem very remorseful, despite the fact that he was toying with people's lives with this theories of with these theories of his, toying with people's lives. Okay, so I just looked it up right now. He has, um, hold on, let me flip it, flip it back into. Okay, so right now the, his uh, final balance in his account is five hundred and thirty Bitcoin, and Bitcoin is how much right now? Oh man, let me look it up. <laughs> what is a preve? We did our homework today, folks. Oh, it's a one. Th- yeah, oh, right. Wow, it's way up. It's six hundred and eighty-nine dollars. Yeah, I got uh, eighty-six dollars, six hundred eighty-six dollars. So, when I click the uh, the the uh, the dollar translation, uh, that is three thousand three hundred and sixty-three thousand dollars in Bitcoin. 
But uh, you only one donated one dollar. Just your mother clearly spanked you, right? You have mommy yeah. issues. <laughs> That's the only reason I got emotional. The only reason I got emotional and started raising my voice while we were discussing this is because I have childhood trauma and I'm afraid to come to terms with it. But what yeah. I should really do is defuse my family and give all my money to Stefan Molyneux and just do whatever he says, despite the fact that he's going to be totally logically inconsistent and ditch all his values at some point down the line. Yeah. The only reason anyone could ever have a problem with that is because of some sort of childhood trauma. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I love how he always like tries to turn it into like, okay, do you have any mommy issues? Like, what is like, what was your childhood like? Were you spanked? Like, how Total was your mother? Projection. Yeah, and then in this video, he says that quote, "mommy issues" is a tell for no argument. It's like, it was like welcome oh, to projection my. theater. <laughs> it, Dude, I, yeah, and here's another thing. Maybe I was a little bit harsh earlier because I'm angry that he's toying with people's lives. But at the end of the day, when I really sit and think about who Stefan Molyneux is. I see a person who's very hurt. I don't mean to get all gay oh, on you, Doc Jim. Is my but friend. yeah, okay. I'm gonna say, but <laughs> I do see a person who's in a lot of pain. I feel very bad for him. Uh, he had a horrible childhood. His dad wasn't around. Has issues with his mom. Uh, we all know the infamous uh, "I didn't kill her" uh, speech he gave. Uh, this is just <clears throat> is an unhealthy person. Yeah, this is a very unhealthy person, and. I feel bad for him. Yeah, good thing he's married to a therapist, right? Yeah. Is she well, apparently she's license? not a very good one. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, she was reprimanded. Uh, but that was yeah. his, that was his fault, though. Like he he was really putting that pressure on her. If you actually listen to some of those episodes, the before the ask a therapist one, he was bringing her on, kind of like berating her publicly about like not wanting to do it. And she was even expressing like I could get in trouble doing this, and then she got in trouble doing yeah. that. <laughs> <It's> like, <laughs> <laughs> and then he told. And then he just flat out lied to Joe Rogan about all of it. Yeah, <laughs> he was like, oh, that never straight happened. up lied. Never happened. Straight up, like I, I uh, it's which was funny because usually he's, uh, usually he's very talented at deflecting, and he can create some distraction or yeah. use fluffy he's, language to make it sound like total nonsense is accurate. But no, he just straight up. He's like, no, that's not true. No. But it was. No. It's like no. <laughs> It's like, nope, it's like, nope, no, no, nope. Uh, really? Are you sure? Because they said it was all fine the and they looked into it and everything was fine. And he was like, really? Because I'm looking at this right now. <laughs> and it says you did. Yeah, he's, like, <laughs> <laughs> he's like, nope, nope, uh, nope. Uh, can you believe it? Something on the internet's not true. That was a lie. Yeah. The lie detector determined that was a lie. Yeah. It's like lie detectors aren't an argument. Yeah. Um, yeah, keep going though with what you were saying. I, yeah, I, so, I think I got no, a lot I was of saying, like, But the whole thing was like, you know, you have to live by the NAP. You know, that's what you have to do. And if you don't do it, then everybody will look down on you uh, and look down on the, uh, the ideology and you're hurting yourself. But, but again, the DMCA, like anytime you look up Molyneux anymore, the DMCA is always at the forefront. Like that, that was that was his that was, you know, that was his Watergate. The other thing was like yeah. he asked for a bunch of money to make a movie. Like he was like I, he was really pushing like documentary. Need, yeah, he was gonna make this documentary. That was like in what 2013. Not a blurb about it since 2014. Like I've you been what, telling people like if you ever see or hear anything about this documentary that was supposed to come out, let me know. Nothing. This guy uh, Burger King or yeah, he used to be a CT 2012 Burger King Bill with three L's. He went and listened to every Molyneux podcast, not from start to beginning, but from beginning to end. Like he started at the newest episode and went backwards all the way in time. And it kind of gave oh, him a wow. different perspective because he was like, I want to read it, listen to it backwards to see how like he, you know, how he, <laughs> how he, uh, you know, evolved backwards. Um, and he was talking about like, no, no, I didn't hear anything about this documentary since like the 2013 or so. So, and he was actually cataloging all this stuff too. So he actually... I should probably link that. It's on, I think it's on the skeptic project. Well, skeptic he like yeah. got spanked. Here's the thing. Oh no, stuff on <laughs> stuff on finishes. Stuff on finishes documentary. Oh, he did. <laughs> Didn't you see it? No. <laughs> Alongside night. Oh fuck. The Alongside bingo. night. It was his documentary about a libertarian society. <laughs> there needs to be a Lobert bingo, and that needs to be one of the things. <laughs> Jane Neal Shulman. <laughs> Alongside night. Shulman. I actually don't know. <laughs> I don't have as much of a problem with Shulman as you do. I don't know Shulman. I'm no, sure Shulman a has guy. a problem with me. I think it's funny. <laughs> like, I think it's funny. Oh. He gets so triggered and he starts bringing this stuff back up. And then he accuses me of trolling him. And I'm like, I don't talk about you. You talk about me. I made Honestly, it. I'm not trying to. <laughs> yeah. I'm not. I'm not trying to troll Shulman here. I'm trying to troll you. That's why I brought up alongside. Okay. I thought you were going to get triggered. 
but oh, you no. didn't. So I still need to buy that. Kind on of a waste. <laughs> mm. I'm kind of kind please, of. please buy this for me. I'll put it on my Amazon wish list. You can buy it for me. <laughs> I'm going to get like eight <laughs> copies now, right? <laughs> like everyone's going to yeah, be like right. trolling me with this. Jim, don't don't act like you have friends. No one's going to buy it for you. Yeah. So the whole spanking so, thing, I want to talk about the the SJW thing because it's it's so ridiculous. So ridiculous. But the, uh, the, the spanking thing, he said that he's gotten thunderous like disagreements from people and apathy from people. Have you experienced that? Because for me, anytime I ever talk to libertarians – and spanking is ever brought up or parenting is ever come, like the one thing that I, I get from every libertarian almost, uh, except for a couple is, you know, spanking is a horrible thing. You should never spank. And he built that to be fair. He built that. That was him. Uh, there were some oh, libertarians no, yeah, before yeah. him that, yeah, d- that were doing that before him, but he was the one that really kind of brought it to the forefront. And that's the thing. What I was going to say is that by claiming that libertarians are totally opposed to this idea that spanking is an, is an act of violence. He's actually undermining his greatest achievement. Yeah. I mean, one of the things I know him best for is his advocacy for peaceful parenting. Yeah. He's not the, he's not the and, best person doing it, but he did bring it to the forefront. So kudos on that. Let me tell you, yeah. I got some admiration from there. I don't agree with the man on a whole lot, or I shouldn't say that. I mean, I, I don't know if I agree with him on a whole lot because I don't know what he believes anymore. <laughs> But, you know, I, I don't I don't like the man as much anymore. I think he's kind of cold and opportunistic. But when it comes to his views on parenting, I really mostly agree. Yeah. I don't agree that you should pick apart somebody's childhood the moment they disagree with you so you can pathologize their descent. Yeah. But I do agree that cutting off a kid's foreskin is kind of weird. Yeah. I don't know why we're doing that. Seems like a bizarre thing to do. Well, it's clearly because of the Jews. It's clear. I think that was what he said. It was like, I don't know. I think it has something to do with oh, the yes, Jewish influence. Oh, yes. He said because of the Jewish influence and libertarianism. Yeah. But libertarians are against circumcision. Yeah. Most libertarians I know are against circumcision. So if there is Jewish li- uh, influence in libertarianism, it's not much. Yeah. Not a whole lot. Yeah, and a lot of the Jewish people that I know that advocate for circumcision don't advocate circumcision for everybody. If they just go like, this is a tradition that we do. That's how they advocate it. You know, like it's only for us. If you don't want to do it, that's fine. Like we're not at, we're not saying you're not going to go to. And even within, like they, they they respect some people to say like ah, I'll join Judaism, but I'm keeping it. <laughs> they're like that's fine. You don't have to keep it. They're you like know? they're like can we just we want you peacefully respect our tradition of cutting our children's penises. It's, it's just terrible. like how to let us be. I don't know what kind of monster would strip us of this right to <laughs> mutilate our children. I'm not defending circumcision at all, by the way. I'm not doing it. Oh, I know, I know, I know yeah. you're not. I know you're not. But he, he did mention. Yeah, he did mention that that he did a debate with a major libertarian. He did not mention him by name, and I have I have my theory on why. Um, but he, uh, he said that like you know like and it was it was almost like. He he tried to he tried to take it down and, and I, I I came out victorious. But if you watch that debate, uh, I don't agree with with Walter Block on this, really. But if you watch that debate, you can you can only walk away saying like I, I may not agree with Walter Block, but he definitely got hit Molyneux in a corner and he lost that debate handedly. I mean, Mo, the, I think the last things that he it. said before he closed it out was. Well, I need to reevaluate my uh, my position on this, and I'll, we'll have another debate. That's that's what he said. I mean, that's that's a pretty big conceit, especially for Molyneux. Yeah, <laughs> like usually, he, especially for Molyneux. Yeah. Again, what made me angry about the entire situation and the video that I watched last night in particular is he's claiming to come out and admit that he was wrong about libertarianism, but the entire thing is well, this libertarians, narcissistic ends. libertarians. Not, not liber- I'm sorry. Yeah. But again, the video. Is just this narcissistic grandstand about how he was right the whole time somehow, even though he's like admitting he was wrong. It's so bizarre. Mm-hmm. It's interesting to get inside this man's head. Um, yeah, and pathologize his descent again. I know people are gonna be like, "Oh, you're triggered that Stefan said bad stuff about libertarians." Like, really? I don't know. I don't care if he says bad things about libertarians. A lot of people do. It was just, it seemed very flippant coming from a man who's had so many other people make sacrifices and who's gained so much at the expense of others by shilling libertarianism. Mm-hmm. Yeah. That, that's my concern. Uh, he didn't, there was no apology. There was no, look, I messed up. I'm sorry that a lot of people left their families 
you guys made me. You're oh, my no, he fan was still base. defending Only that. Reason. He's still huh? defend. He's still defending that position in the video. The the against me argument and cutting off people who 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 say they want you sh- who who in this this theoretical framework that you're bringing this this um, I guess what what is what is the term for it? It's a uh, you know it's it's they they're not really saying like I want you shot. They're just saying like in in this theoretical construct that we're talking about when you're talking about the state in this abstract. That's the word I'm looking for in this abstract that we're talking about. Yes, I want you shot because it, it, on the whole, for society, that you know, it's it's better. I re- they genuinely don't want you shot. Like when I've had, I when I thought the the against me argument was a good idea. So the, well, we should probably not bury the lead with the against me argument. It is in the defooing thing, right? So do you know what the mm-hmm. against me argument is? Do you want to explain it? To yeah. Do, so my understanding of the, the against board me version. <laughs> yeah, I. My understanding of the against me argument is that when you have a conversation with somebody about libertarianism and statism and they refuse to renounce their status beliefs, you explain to them that because the government is predicated upon the use of force, that if they persist in their belief that a government is necessary, they believe it's morally acceptable to use violence against you. Yeah. And if you say like, well, you know, on the whole, maybe it probably is a good idea to uh, to to make you pay taxes <laughs> so we can have this wonderful, glorious thing. Uh, in this abstract that we're that we're con- that we're talking about, but they're not actually saying like I really wa- I really hope tomorrow that the government comes and kicks your door down. They're not saying that. <laughs> they're actually <laughs> saying like I hope I hope you get away with it. <laughs> but the- in this yeah. abstract, you know, like yes, that's what they're saying. Yeah. But and because so, and because you're not differentiating my- this, you're you're saying like okay, now I have a reason to not like you and to cut you out of my life. That's what the whole against me argument is. If you think about what the against me argument is, at the end of the day, it's basically you don't want program X, government program X, so therefore you want old people to die, and I, I hate you for that. You know, you want my grandmother to starve in the streets because my grandmother's needs social security and the pensions from you know, some government agency she worked for or whatever. Like that. Yeah, I, I totally get what you're saying. I yeah. totally get what you're saying. And which is interesting um, because he brings up this whole thing about Bastiat when he said when governments, when people say like, you don't want government to do X, that means you don't want X. You know, you don't want government to provide schools. You That means you don't want children educated. Yeah. Yeah. But, you know, like kind of like, you know, if you don't want to build a wall between the United States and Mexico, you want America to turn into Mexico, (laughs) right? (laughs) Something like that. Yeah. 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 Well, no, this is another weird thing. Like when it comes to Stefan Malady's positions, I understand he hasn't renounced the fooling, but he's very still much in favor of it. He doesn't talk about it anymore. Go ahead. But the problem, the problem that I'm addressing here is that he is currently taking a political stance that five years ago, he would have told somebody to defoo their parents for taking. Mm-hmm. Now, maybe I'm exaggerating because I think in a lot of the situations, and I could be wrong, Jim, you've studied his career more than I have, but I think in a lot of positions, well, in a, a lot fan. of situations. Huh? Well, yeah. Um, I don't think, usually when he advocated defooing, it was when the kid's parents were abusive in other ways too, so it wouldn't just be like, oh, they're voting for a politician, defoo them. It would just add to it. But the point is, uh, so I, I shouldn't say that he would actually advocate for somebody to defoo because they had the position that he holds now, but it would certainly contribute to his decision Yeah. to influence them in that direction. Yeah. But there's something I really want to talk about, and I think we already mentioned it a little bit, but Seamus, you just don't bash feminists enough. You just don't. The social justice warriors, they're just getting it easy You're from right, you. Dude. I, I, You're I right. don't understand this. This has been like the biggest trend in libertarianism since – you know, you know, Silk Road. <laughs> that, yeah, right. Like bashing SJWs is like it's red meat, and everybody loves eating the red meat. Everybody. Exactly, except for stupid vegan social justice warriors. <laughs> I mean, I think even and- MK Lords has even had fun bashing social justice warriors. You know, as as a social justice warrior as she is, and we got all that comments. You know, it's like I've seen her kind of engage in it too. Everybody does. You know. It's yeah. fun. And so it's the easy. idea that's yes, yeah, so that's why it's insane to me that Stefan is sitting there saying that libertarians are on the side of the social justice warriors. It's yeah. so uh Yeah, and to be fair, I don't do it that often just because I see it at what it is. It's just red meat, and I have engaged in it in the past. And I'm not, I'm not saying I'm not going to do it anymore. I try to refrain from. Oh it no, as I much for sure can. do it. Yeah, I try to refrain from as much as I can because, like, yeah, that's not what I'm really interested in. Like, the whole identity politics mm-hmm. doesn't really interest me too much. 
Uh, but every once in a while, it's, it's it's fun to pick on Kevin Logan. You know, it's it's really fun to pick on him because it's so easy, so easy to f- make fun of like Jenny McDermott and all these. Who else? Christy. Oh Winters, my gosh. Uh, Steve Shibes. It's just, it's easy. It's fun too. And I I you can go on my channel. You can Is see Steve like videos Shives? about all of them. Steve Shibes. Is Steve Shibes still like an actual person, or did? <laughs> He disintegrate, yeah. Like, is he still like a thing? <laughs> is that horrible? Like, once someone becomes an internet personality that you're familiar with, they turn into this totally abstract concept, and you stop viewing them as a human being. So, my first thought when you brought up Steve Shives, because it's a name I haven't heard in a while, is <laughs> is he still a thing? Yeah. Like, not like, oh, he's a per- person. So of course he still exists. He just isn't online as much or doesn't have the same presence. Like, is he still a thing? Is he still exist? Like, I remember what? his channel used to be really good. He had like the five stupid things video and series and, and then it just kind of like he got married. Because he used to like post naked pictures of himself on like all these dating forums. And you can go and find him <laughs> if you want him. And he found he finally found a, a girlfriend and she's like this uber feminist. I mean like Tumblr oh, ass. Yeah. And of course he just fell right into that and it just went downhill from there. And now he's even to the point now where he doesn't even call his series five stupid things anymore because it's it's ableist. <laughs> <laughs> so we call it something else now. Cause stu- cause- Five problematic things. <laughs> right? It's a mess. And That's it's, so it's, funny. See, I'm not afraid of the backlash from the social justice warriors, you know? Like, who cares? It's kind of funny to see their little comments like, why are you making fun of Steve Shibes? Like, in oh, ableism. dude, I, I love the people that I don't like. Honestly, I love bashing social justice warriors because <laughs> – when they get angry, it's fun to have discussions with them. Like, if you get a libertarian or a conservative or an alt right person mad at you, like, even if they're alt right will they're trigger bring... alt right will trigger pretty hard too. <laughs> I'm sorry, they do. I don't know though. I don't know. But the, like the alt right, it depends on the alt writer, I guess. Um, but like well, alt right libertarians, conservatives, like usually they'll bring something that kind of resembles an argument. Social justice warriors are just going to spew some crazy verbal diarrhea that's just full of academic jargon. Yeah. Like, oh, well, the systemic processes that you're upholding by your uh, privilege, like just they'll just go on and on with statements that don't actually mean anything. Like, you're, you're further marginalizing the identities of the oppressed, blah, 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 blah. and it's like that's the those are the people I love arguing yeah. with because it's just fun. Yeah. It's just fun. I, I love- when I argue with like conservatives or libertarians or the alt right or anybody else it's like it's kind of sad because i'm like no oh, yeah I get what a, you're come on man you're, you're virtue t- signaling they're not even using virtue signaling right by the way they're kind of using it to like you're saying things that you find moral and i don't agree with so i'm just gonna say you're virtue signaling <laughs> like, yeah i could see that yeah. no no I, molyneux does that I, molyneux I, like when it comes to virtue actual virtue signaling like Molyneux actually even used the word like that's not virtuous. <laughs> I mean, like I don't I don't agree with what you're doing, and it's not virtuous. Yeah, that's a good point, dude. Mal- Molyneux Molyneux is like referred to. He has literally referred to himself as virtuous in yeah. the past. So <laughs> he still does. <laughs> he still but does. He yeah. does in this video. <laughs> <laughs> that's so funny, dude. No, I mean that's the thing. I get where the term virtue signaling comes from. I agree that it's something you see more often from leftists nowadays. Um, but that being said, yeah, it is misused. Some people yeah. will just call anyone who's disagreeing with them a virtue signaling. But there are people, it's like, wow, that guy's virtue signaling, like Steve Shives. Um, yeah. It's super funny. I don't know why I'm fascinated by Steve Jobs or Steve, Steve Jobs. Jobs. <laughs> Steve Jobs became a social justice warrior. Um, in, in, in his Dude, grave. Can you imagine if Steve Jobs had a social justice warrior YouTube channel? He just had his turtleneck and shit. Um, <laughs> no, Steve. <laughs> um, his iPad is a zero. He's like, this iPad caters to marginalized. Ident-. He's like, we didn't use any Western science when we made our newest. <laughs> it's like made out of bamboo and peanut butter. <laughs> He's like, we didn't appropriate anything. <laughs> Actually, bamboo appropriates Western culture. He's like, "Fuck!" <laughs> Back to the drawing board. <laughs> yeah. uh, the uh, the but no the uh, he's like <laughs> the iPad has dreadlocks. He's like, "No, we can't put the dreadlocks." <laughs> like someone pitches dreadlocks. He's like, "No, only the 
the white iPads can't have dreadlocks on them. Uh, <laughs> but no, so Steve Shives, what what was the deal with him? Because I'm familiar with him as a social justice warrior. I know he was like an atheist YouTuber before that. I knew of him as a social justice warrior YouTuber, and then I just forgot about him. And now we're talking about him. And I'm wondering, yeah, what he, was his deal? Did he used to be cool? Did he used to be a yeah, cool yeah. boy? Yeah, he he was kind of cool. Like there was some stuff. Even looking back in his older days, who were kind of like, ah, it's kind of weird, but whatever. On on the whole, like he was really good at popping conspiracy theories, and you know, really good about skepticism and all that stuff. And then you know, he got married, and then his channel just kind of took a hard U turn. Um, yeah, the only and, conspiracy theory he hasn't been able to pop is patriarchy. Apparently, <laughs> yeah. Like, well, he still does like you know five stupid things about the patriarchy, or five problematic things about the patriarchy. <laughs> Whatever he, whatever he's calling it now, <laughs> but, five yeah. problematic patriarchies this week. Yeah, but the, okay. So back yeah. to the video. Uh, yeah, I'm sorry. Yeah, so like I guess we're not we're not hitting feminists hard enough. I, I guess like <laughs> honestly, like there's only a handful of uh, I would say like social justice warriors in the libertarian community, like, and they all kind of congregate together, uh, you know, in libertarian gatherings, and it's usually like the C4SS people. Um, and even still, like when it comes to just social justice warrior type people, they're not that bad. They usually kind of keep to themselves. Uh, Kathy Risenwitz will kind of make a stink, but no one really cares about her. You know, like who cares? It's like, dude, it's like if you're a social justice warrior who doesn't believe in the state, yeah. you're probably still super annoying and you're probably still going to try to get me fired for my job and stuff, which sucks, but... I don't even think they do pass, that. Like, yeah, laws, so. I don't think they just do yeah, that. I think they just come like, out and say not... like, "He triggered me. He made fun of my purple hair." Like that's about yeah. It. Like people don't realize. Like the reason social justice warriors are an issue isn't because they're annoying. There are a lot of annoying people, and social justice yeah. warriors are particularly annoying. But it's because they have a certain level of power, and they're able to shut down speech that upsets them, and they get people fired from their jobs, and they control the universities. That's why they're an issue. Yeah, but they're they're, they're kind annoying. of losing that. A, a lot of people recognize it now, and they're they're kind of like yeah. ignoring them. So like they're losing power, and it's is- uh, it's good to bash them just for that, you know, to get get that power provoked from them. Yeah, continually strip it from them. Yeah, but I guess uh, but pe- anyway. Well, I was going to say that that uh, but people say that because Steph opposes feminism, like he hates women. That's never been the argument. Like I'm, I'm sure, like there are feminists who have said like he opposes feminism, he must hate women. But he's actually said some pretty horrible things about women. Like I agree. Yeah, no, I agree, dude. I'm, I'll virtue signal with you here. Yeah. Um, I don't hate women, and Steph does. So but women I listen to like Tom Likas. So, feminism. but but, I, like, <laughs> but for someone who's <laughs> claiming to be virtuous, you know, and loving loving all people and all that stuff, like he he really does have a problem, you know. And no, I mean I I agree actually. Yeah, and I've sensed. Because- I mean, like there was that that thing that Trump said like not too long ago, where he said like you're like oh you're like I'll be dating her in ten years, and he was pointing to like some twelve year old girl or something. <laughs> So gross! Did he really say that? Well, no, well, it's not gross because it's it's a, it's kind of a self deprecating joke. Like it's actually one of the one times where he actually was self deprecating. You know, where he was saying like, "I, no, I, I date younger chicks." Shit. That's the joke. And i've I've made yeah, I've made similar comments, but I'm not running for president. That's the difference. <laughs> like yeah, you know, like I have said, like yourself. yeah, I've said, like you know, like hey, if you go and see all those despicable, like those little girls going to go see Despicable Me with the little hot, Hello Kitty backpack. Yeah, in about fifteen or sixteen years, that's going to be your your new girlfriend. I, I've said things like that before, you know, but I'm not, again, I'm not running because for president. It puts it in perspective because you're a gross boy. Yeah. Here's 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 what I'm getting at, fella, big guy. Um, <laughs> when it comes to Steph Bot, when it comes to Stepho Bobefo, um, I used to love his videos. Was a big fan. Big, huge fan. Frankly, the hugest, tremendous fan. Frankly, huge Frank. fan, tremendous fan. We're gonna just biggest fan or bigly huge. <laughs> Big um, uh, wrong. so wrong. I was a fan. And wrong. Every now and then, wrong. You're you're a puppet. You're a puppet. <laughs> you're, um, you're a fucking every now puppet. And, yeah. No, you're a puppet. You're a puppet. Um, every now and then, I'll still chime in his channel to see what he's saying. But I used to consume everything he put out there. Yeah, it's me and, too. Uh, when I remember he made a lot of good points about feminism and women, and then he would say some things that seemed like they were an actual issue. And I just remember thinking, okay, this is getting a little scary. Like, 
I rem- I actually remember uh, listening to the podcast for the first time where he says something like, women need to be held accountable for dating assholes. Yeah. It's like, what, um, is that? what is that? And I the get world's that, a that horrible place necess- because we don't hold them accountable for, for marrying and procreating with jerks. Like, what the hell does that mean? Be- because it's, like, it's kind of this myth that, that women like assholes. It's not, it's not entirely it, to an extent. Like if you're going to, it's kind of, no, I think it's kind of true. It's, it's somewhat true. It's, it's, it depends on the woman. It's sort of true. Okay. So, Tom Likas always talks about like, you know, be an asshole because chicks dig assholes. But Tom Likas is intentionally explaining to st- what he describes as stupid men who don't understand women. So it's easier to explain, like, just be a jerk rather than explain like, okay, so there, you want to kind of do like reverse psychology. So if you kind of act like a woman can't join your club, she'll do almost anything to get in. Uh, so you want to kind of make this kind of this thing where you, where you're kind of like above them, like you see like, Oh, I can do better than you. So that, you know, they, so they think like, why, why is he acting like that? It's easier. It's easier to just, just kind of go, you know what? You're an idiot. Just be, just be a jerk to them. Okay. <laughs> and it'll achieve well, the same results sort of. Yeah. So I kind of get what you're saying. Well, I yeah. understand you of how women are and um, it's, it's not women. Not, it's not women. I, it's everything. Like dogs will chase rabbits over a rock yeah. that's sitting there because it's well, they. We pursue that which retreats. That's what it is. It's it's a human thing. It's it's all people. Yeah. It's not women, right? It, well, it, it's just easier it to explain it in that. You're, yeah, your virtue signaling. Your virtue yeah. signaling, Jim. It is just women. Uh, <laughs> no, what I was gonna say is, everyone talks about like, oh, women only like assholes. But my argument has always been, I think women like men who are confident and a lot of dudes who are confident are assholes. Like assholes are very confident. Yeah. Assholes are usually very confident people. So that's true too. Girls, a girl will, would a girl, all right, here's what I'll say. And I might land myself in hot water with some of the feminists and some of the MRAs. Um, but I maybe think both are a little too. right, both are a little wrong here. Right, yeah, maybe some it. lady friend. Um, <laughs> libertarian here's, here's the point. woman. Really? Yeah. Right. How come you're not hitting yeah. on her. <laughs> <laughs> Go ahead. Um, because she would fall in love with me, Jim. No one's gonna get these references. Yeah. Uh, let me. So wait. Let me just finish up what I was saying here. <laughs> I think women. All right. They like guys who are confident. Every guy who's an asshole is confident. A woman would rather date a confident guy who isn't an asshole than a confident guy who is an asshole. But she would rather date a confident guy who's an asshole than a guy with no confidence. Yeah. That's just. That's how I feel. To be honest, it sounds bad, but I think it's true. Yeah. No one, no one likes nobody, nobody, not just women. Nobody likes the guy that just sits alone, you know, and doesn't make eye contact and just kind of wants to sit alone. Yeah. No one, no one wants to hang out with that guy. Okay. But everybody wants to hang out with the guy who comes in with like two beers in his hand. He's like, let's party. Hey, what's up? up? Yeah. Yeah, Grab him by the pussy. Yeah. Yeah, That's what they want to hang out with. Right. That's what, yeah, no, that definitely will help your career in the future. If you say that out loud, Jim. Yeah. Definitely. (laughs) 10 years from now when you're running for president and then I'm going to get in trouble for being on the podcast with you. (laughs) For anyone listening to this, I want to make this clear. For anyone listening to this or any other podcast, I do not condone I do not condone any of the disgusting things that Jim says. <laughs> he's a gross boy. And he's a sick man. Yeah. All right. Anyway. So, so Stefan please, Molyneux. Please, please. He does no. say things like, here's, here's uh, all right, this is going to sound bad, but um, Stefan Molyneux, I don't know if he hates women, but he definitely never has anything good to say about them. <laughs> <laughs> Unless they're on the show talking bad about SJWs, right? <laughs> yeah, well, it. The thing is, and I hate that because the idea of like a misogynist or like a woman hater is so overused. Yeah. And I don't think that the guy goes around like, oh, I hate women. But now and then he says things that I'm like, well, that's not a healthy attitude towards females. That's a little weird guy. Like, Yeah. But I'm virtue signaling. I See, this bothers me. I hate that I have to take the... I hate that you I have to take what people might call a feminist everything, position. Everything, everything is virtue signaling. Like I don't really care if you think I'm a virtuous person. I'm not. Like I, I make that pretty clear. <laughs> but some things. No, are just I'm like, certainly not either. Okay, come on, really? <laughs> is that what we're is that what that we're going with? Okay. Yeah, I, but yeah, that's that's my whole point. Every now and then, he has said things in his podcast that just frightened me about yeah. women. And that I was just like, well, that's weird because the reason. And I, I, let me actually put this out there. When I would listen to his podcast, I had a number of female friends who were feminists, and I remember thinking, 
he makes such good arguments because the man is a force of nature in a debate. He makes such good yeah, arguments. He is. he is. This man makes such good arguments. I want to show him to some of these girls so that they'll see how ridiculous all this critical theory and feminism stuff is. But the more I would listen to him, the more I would pick up on these really weird statements like women only date assholes we need to hold women accountable for the men they're with and i'm like well now i can't use this job in society the whole women's whole job in society is to get dolled up and just say yes or no yeah yes that's what he said um what else did he say uh that Robin Williams died because women are addicted to free shit. Yeah. That's like those pastors that say hurricanes happen because there's gay people. And by like, the way, it was such totally a ridiculous untrue. connection. It was so totally huh? untrue. Like everybody who knew Robin Williams was like, no, his wife was not like that. Like she was really good to him. <laughs> you know, like it was, it was not that like it, there was a lot of, he had like clinical depression. Uh, he, he also had like open heart surgery. And if you know anything about open heart surgery, like when you, when you, any kind of have open body surgery, like it causes depression in people, you know, huh. he had, he had some drug abuse in this past too, you know, with cocaine and psychedelics, but you know, I, I'm a, I'm a big fan of psychedelics. I don't think that's a big issue, but you know, uh, all, I don't know, all man. things you take, considered you get a bad hit of something. Yeah. You get a bad hit of something. You can mess your brain up. Yeah. All things considered, <laughs> you know, especially yeah, some of that stuff sure. that was going around in the seventies. But uh, do you want to go on to police? Because we have like some other things too <laughs> that's in this video. Uh, do you want to go to the Bye, police? Bye, Jim. Police. Well, we, we're only in. We're on, like we're like forty six minutes in. So, <laughs> like, unless you want to do like a three hour podcast. No, let's speed through these. Let's okay. speed through. These. <laughs> All right. So with the police, I got to take a nap. My pillow's got my name on it. You write your name on your pillow? Okay. Um, the police. Shut up, Jim. So if you criticize the police, you have blood on your hands. At all. That's an interesting position for an anarchist to take. Yeah. I mean, I imagine he's not an anarchist anymore. But yeah, he's like, you know, most of us Harrians, I know, don't live in the ghetto. So it's like, stop making these comments. You're not the one who's paying for them. I like and how he like, mentions no. bombed out Philadelphia. Like, no libertarians live there, but... Like there was like a like a like a syndicated national radio ho- talk show host that lives in Kensington, which is like the bombed out section of Philly. Steve Miller Miller. Yeah. He's also a stand up comic. Like he's hilarious. He's a, he's a Lulbert. Yeah, yeah, he's a Lulbert. <laughs> yeah. I was gonna say I know that name. Yeah, he's he li- he he's proud to live in Kensington, and he like talks about his his ghetto stories and stuff like that. He loves it. He owns a house there. He doesn't want to move. We've been trying to get, convince him to come out to Vegas to get out of that area, but I have a feeling if he does, he's going to move to North Vegas, which is just bad. Uh, which I lived in, by the way. You know, I lived in the ghetto. But uh, of course you did. You're a hood rat. Yeah, I mean, but there I, I I there is some truth to what he says. Like when you're talking about Michael Brown, and there's like clear media disinformation about Michael Brown. He had his oh, hands yeah. up. He was a gentle giant. He would never do anything wrong. He didn't do nothing. All that stuff, you know, didn't reach for the gun. All that stuff. It was just crap. Like, he, he had, tried to have a physical altercation with this guy. I think he even punched him, didn't he? I think that's what happened. Like, he punched. He was punching the cop, reached for his gun. Oh, dude, he was reaching for the cop's gun. Yeah. That's how you get shot. That's how you get shot. Like, I can understand. Like, yeah, you shouldn't, shouldn't make a big fuss out of that. You shouldn't make him a media star. That's clear. But when you have someone who, like, shoots a guy while he's running away in the back five times, like, come on. And, you know, now he's, he's, he's being uh, – they, they indicate – what is that? What's the word? I can't think right now. I didn't have enough caffeine. Um, they indicted him on those charges, right, for murder. Yeah. And then he defends him. <laughs> it's like, come on, man. They're, they're, and his, he's like, well, you know, if he is running away, he can't shoot if he knows he's going to go and harm someone else. Like, the guy was didn't have anything. He didn't he have anything. And Molyneux's rationalization was, well, he can go home and murder his wife. It's like, that, you could say that about anything. You know? Yeah. So, yeah, yeah, there is some truth to that. If you do that and it causes up, uh, unrest, uh, police were going to be less likely to uh, patrol your area because they don't want to be the next media star. That's true, but there's also times where it's appropriate to pl- criticize the police. Drug war yeah. is one of them, which I guess he's supporting a candidate who's for the drug war. So, so he wants me shot. Yeah, he wants he wants to. No, he doesn't want me shot. 
He doesn't want me shot because I don't do drugs, but you just endorse the use of You don't have uh, to. Narcotics. Like, what about that, that baby that had a flashbang thrown in its crib? There was just a story the other day where, a, like, an old woman was shot because she had, like, a pot plant in her, <laughs> in her, in her front well, yard. It's ridiculous. Jim, if you want... If you don't wanna, if you don't wanna get a get a flash grenade thrown in your crib, you shouldn't do drugs as a baby. I don't know what to tell you. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> uh, do you want to talk about IQ? Is this something you want to talk about? Because this is a contentious topic: race and IQ. No, I'm, I, I mean, I'm willing to have a discussion on it. This will probably get me in trouble. Yeah. Um, uh, we won't go. No, deep I don't into know it about. Don't it. Like I mean, it. I've heard. So, no, I've because I've I've heard. Just, I know Molyneux brings up racial differences between, uh, or I'm sorry, he brings up like uh, IQ differences between the races. He's discussed that before in the past. He's had yeah. guests on that discuss it. I haven't looked into the research myself. Uh, is there anything legitimate that would actually say? I mean, I've I've heard like I know that um, my dad was a test coordinator in the inner city of Chicago for years and. I definitely know that when it comes to standardized testing, different racial groups get different scores. That's not something that's controversial when you talk about the ACT. Mm -hmm. uh, so I don't know why it would be controversial when you talk about IQ. I think it's because people see IQ, IQ sort of as the end all be all. Well, the IQ test is there's a lot of problems with the IQ test. There's a lot of mm -hmm. big, big problems with it. Like SAT scores are probably a better indicator. But uh, yeah, IQ tests kind of they kind of presume like you you have like certain, uh, you know, it, it presumes like you kind of live in, in certain areas. Like if you if you test um, IQ of black people in in higher income areas, they do very well, right? Uh, but mm -hmm. you know, doing lower income areas. But what it, what it really boils down to, and they don't control for this, and any of these cherry picked things that they talk about, is that white people had all of the same problems that black people had in the southern in the southern states. Like way back when, and even even the way they talked, the way they dressed, the way they 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 had like this no not the way they dressed, but the way they uh, conducted themselves, uh, sexual promiscuity, having women out of wedlock, uh, alcoholism, drug abuse, uh, you know, bling culture, all of that stuff. They, that was a that was it was not a black or white thing. It was a southern thing. Like it was hillbillies and crackers. Oh no, I would agree. Yeah. yeah. No, I, I would agree that it's mostly cultural. The education went down, the people migrated up, actually got better education. But if you look at the scores, the testing scores of black people in like say Ohio versus how they were in the south, like black people were doing way better than white people in the south. Mm -hmm. And it was it was because they all kind of came from that same kind of culture. And then when they moved north, like the the Yanks were not having any of that, and they would teach them like this is how you talk. Stop talking like that. And it actually originated from Northern England. And hmm. there was a great book about this. And if you haven't read it, read it. It's called uh, is it Black Rednecks and White White Liberals. And it actually explains why not a soul. why this yeah why this thing still exists. And this kind of goes into that SNL video that that you loved, <laughs> but. Uh, yeah. yeah, but the reason why that still existed is because we've kind of made that a black thing. And if you criticize it, you're racist. And we're going to have all these great society programs that kind of encourage, you know, well, like dependency on the state. And so they kind of keep them in this kind of mental, you know, slavery, you know, and all, yeah. the, all it's all the white liberals that have been doing this, you know. Oh, completely. Yeah. Completely. I would completely agree. So, no, I don't think it has anything. Well, it has some to do with biological difference. You can't say there's no biological difference because IQ has to come from genetics. That's why there's no monkeys that are, you know, exactly. coming up with the, you know, theoretical relativity or anything like that. You know, dolphins yeah, aren't. People, people, yeah. <laughs> yeah, I've heard people say like, oh, IQ genes have nothing to do with IQ. Okay, so then why doesn't every, what? Yeah, why doesn't there's your Different cat... animals have different genetic codes and that leads to a different IQ level. Like. How many, how many cats you do you know that podcast? You know, um, well, Michael <laughs> Bean probably has a few. I'm convinced that Michael uh, is actually secretly a cat. Yeah, but for the most part, a lot of it comes from your your experiences, your, your environment, yeah. which is funny because I, I'm a big uh, – I'm not a big uh, blank slater, but that's not what it, what it comes down to. It's not a blank slate argument. I'm not a blank yeah. slate guy either. I think yeah. that's nonsense. But environment does play a major role when it comes into that stuff. And he even acknowledges it. Like, don't spank because it lowers your IQ. <laughs> oh, yeah, right. Yeah. yeah, that's a good point. Yeah, I didn't even think about that. Yeah. 
He's like spanking low is your IQ. So does disagreeing with me. Yeah. And by the way, if you disagree with racial realism, you're responsible for the Iraq and Afghanistan wars. I did. I was unaware. <laughs> Which I guess he's How responsible did, for because he wasn't an advocate of it that at the time, right? That's his I, fault. He's got blood on his hands. Mm, yeah. Wow, dude. Stuff. Stuff. Can't believe him. Yeah. So do you think that the people on the right are for smaller government – Do I believe the people on the right are for smaller government? Yeah. Yeah. I don't think that the politicians behave in a way that will actually bring about a smaller government. And I think oftentimes people are duped into voting for the right wing because they truly believe that uh, they give the it service. conservatives want to sh- shrink the government. But um, they don't. You get what I'm yeah, the Bush, what? Admini- well, the Bush administration, like the, what, the first six years of it, where they just had a Republican House and Senate and executive. And all they did was mm-hmm. just grow the size of government. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Exactly. So I think that people who are conservative, I think conservative voters want smaller government. Yeah. I don't think the Republican Party does. And well, I don't think the Republican Party does right by their voters. Well, they kind of so. say they do, but liberals kind of have like the same thing too. Uh, where, you know, well, it, it really yeah. depends on how, like they, they like the ideology. Like, yeah, it's smaller government, but they're like, okay, are, is the military too too big then? Oh no no, we need it bigger. Okay, what about the drug? Yeah. Yeah, oh right. no no, we should expand that. It's like, what do you want to shrink? Like one bureaucracy called the IRS. That's yeah. not yeah helpful. <laughs> you know? like, yeah, yeah. Uh, I get what you're saying. Yeah, so I don't buy that whole people on the right for small government. A lot of them are that, right? A lot of them are are that, but. Not all, not all men. Hashtag right. not all. Not, not all. Not all right. <laughs> <laughs> not all. Yeah, and he also says that, that Christians and the right don't attack; only the left does. Oh yeah, something like that. I remember reading that. Yeah, like I don't know. Have you ever? Oh, no, I'm sorry. I remember hearing. I remember hearing that. I remember hearing him yeah. say that. Have you heard Ben Shapiro? That guy is, like is the biggest attack dog ever. Like he's the greatest. Yeah, that man's a <laughs> savage. I fucking love Ben. Yeah, I don't even oh agree with him on everything, but it's there. I love listening to him because he just like he 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 no holds barred. He just he'll just tell you what he thinks. And if a social justice warrior comes in, which by the way, never happens, right? We never attack the social justice warriors ever. It's just Molyneux. Yeah, but when he uh, comes right. in, like he'll just rip them to shreds. Like the th- the th- this Ben Shapiro Thug Life videos are the best thing ever. <laughs> So good. Yeah. So good. Yeah. He, um, yeah, you know, he's so good, dude. That's the thing. Uh, the man is so unbelievably intelligent. I would love him and Stefan to have a conversation. I would love to just watch Ben Shapiro mop the floor with Stefan. <laughs> About Trump. Because I like Ben Shapiro. Here's, here's why I like Ben Shapiro. Ben Shapiro is just, he is somebody whose arguments are far superior to Stefan's. He's somebody who's clearly has a higher IQ than Stefan. Oh, yeah. Uh, as yeah. far as I'm aware. Um, he's somebody who is a little bit arrogant, but he doesn't have this crazy Messiah complex. Yeah. Uh, probably cause he doesn't even believe in the Messiah cause he's Jewish. Um, he's also, uh, that was a bad joke, but he's also, you know what I mean? Like Ben Shapiro just represents so many good values and he makes so many good arguments, yeah. but without all the crazy shit behind him that Stefan has. Yeah. And he's also a never Trumper too. Which is probably why you'll never see yeah, him. That's right. <laughs> never see him on there. I think uh, Molyneux auditioning to be on Trump TV. That's why I think this is all boiling down to. Um, uh, that would be fascinating. I could see it. He yeah. wants to make more money. Did, a few years ago, didn't he say that if he, he's like mentioning that if he compromised, he could get like a job in talk radio or on television, but he's not going to do that because he's too virtuous. Yeah. Like well, I, I can almost remember him saying shift something report, like this. He? Yeah, he was. He used to co-host a shift report every once in a while. Yeah, yeah. I remember that. Yep. But he's not on the radio anymore, and I am, so ha ha. <laughs> ha ha. Wow, dude. Ha, ha. You savage. Shots fired. Uh, so there's Shot only two more things part. that he's talking about this uh, in this video, and that's immigration and Donald Trump, which is... Do you want to talk about Donald Trump? I think we kind of beat that horse. <laughs> China. Yeah. yeah, here's my thing with Trump. Um, I would certainly take him over Hillary. Uh, but I'm not in love with the man. Um, you know, my big thing is that I am a pro-life libertarian. And so if I have to pick one issue that like he definitely, but he's, I don't know if Trump's really pro-life. I feel like 
he's this strange yeah. sort of populist who I who adopted certain Republican positions because he knew he wasn't going to be able to run as a Democrat. But still, uh, I I still pick him over a lot Hillary. Of his positions, yeah. Uh, and I, and I mentioned in a video that I did about him recently that uh, I might vote for him probably, but I also won't like officially endorse him because I'm somewhat lo- reluctant to vote for him, and I'm not gonna push people in the direction of voting for somebody who I'm not even certain I want to vote for myself. Yeah. But that being said, he, I guess my Getty, argument is... You heard his Gettysburg don't speech, fi- right? No. No? Okay, we'll talk about that. Go ahead. Sorry sorry to interrupt. I just wanted well, to make sure. I- sorry to interrupt. <laughs> Did, but sorry, excuse me. I'm sorry to interrupt. <laughs> um, yeah, I just... Like I said, I, I can't... I just... If there was anyone... I'm, this is not an endorsement of Trump, but if there is anyone I did endorse... It would basically have to be Trump because everyone else in the race is pro-choice, and I can't really uh, endorse a pro-choice candidate. Yeah, um, but, it's, but you know, like the character matters, right? Like this is what Ben Shapiro talks about: character matters. And if no, we that's can't, a, we no, can't that's trust the character true. of him, yeah, it's like, well, do we really know that he? Because he's he spent his entire life being pro pro abortion. Yeah, yeah and, exactly. I, and I'm sort of coming no, to exactly. the kind of pro pro abortion thing, but my problem is like abortion is going to happen anyway. And I think that if you're going to yeah. have abortion, you might as well at least protect. A, if you're going to protect at least life, you might as well at least protect the life of the mother that's doing it. You know, and they're going to get an infection because they're going to use a coat hanger at the end of the day. Yeah, but the thing is, people say that, but a lot of the infections that women died from back uh, in the days of back alley abortions were things that would be cured if you had access to penicillin, and they just didn't have access to we, it. We, we kind of don't have access to penicillin. <laughs> you have to go through a doctor and all that stuff. You know, and then you have to oh no! Still, yeah, but you could just yeah. go to a doctor and say you had a different infection or something like that. Or you can go to a, an animal feed store and get penicillin. I guess that's what a lot of people. Yeah. Do right now. So people talk like, oh, if 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 abortion was illegal, all these women would be dying all the time for these infections. But again, a lot of these infections, they're they're not. They're actually very easily curable. Yeah. Um, so uh, I mean, yeah, like uh, 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 because I don't know. I don't know when when life is. When 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 the yeah uh, excuse me I don't know when the the ghost enters the shell that's that's the end. No, of I get it. what you're saying. You don't know when life begins. Yeah, and and nobody does. I mean, there's there's religious no. texts that say when when <laughs> when the ghost enters the shell, but we don't really know. Like we don't know no from yeah. a scientific standpoint. So until we well know, because yeah. science can't I, answer. Yeah. It's it's a question of philosophy, not a question of science, right? I mean, science can't answer once something becomes human. It seems like se. viability um, may be the answer, but I don't know viability well, outside of the womb. But then again, it's like, I, is it? So that like the day before it's viable, it doesn't have rights. I, I just don't buy that. My thing is that we if all right. So scientifically well, speaking, philosophically <laughs> speaking, I say that we have to. Be, do, do dementia well, patients I, I have say, rights? Do they have full rights? Well, what do you mean by that? <laughs> so how do you limit dementia patients? Well, dementia patients, they can't really have personal autonomy, right? No. You, can't, you just can't be like, oh, well, he doesn't, he wants to go outside and dance like, in the street. You also can't, like, go rip a dementia, yeah. you can't go rip a dementia patient apart with four, like, you yeah, can't yeah, just right, grab right. your medical tools but I'm just saying, like, a dementia patient up. But I'm, but I'm saying, if you're just saying on, on, a, on a whole scale, like, you just can't say, like, well, they, they have full rights. Uh, the kids don't really have full rights. Uh, dementia patients I, don't I, really I have full rights. I sort of get what you're saying, but yeah, the yeah, right yeah. to live, at least. I'm not okay. saying full rights, but the right to live. You're right. Um, right. They have the right to live. Um, and I would also argue that, look, even if, so, for example, my religion would say that life begins at conception, but I also understand that's difficult for people to swallow because we don't have all the scientific data to say that it begins exactly at conception, or maybe we do. But the point is, if we don't know when life begins exactly, I feel like it's better to stay on the, stay on the safe side and say, all right, well, this could be a living human being that we're killing, so let's not kill it. Yeah. That's yeah. my argument. Like, we need to err on that. Like, all right, if, if you're looking, if there's a building in the distance – and you have the button that can demolish it, and you don't know if there are any people are in there, but there might be. Like you wouldn't demolish it. You'd be like, "Oh well, I don't know if anyone's in there, so I better stay safe and not be responsible for potentially ending a human life." Yeah, and besides, you can, there's always adoption, right? Yeah, exactly. Yeah. And one of the biggest problems that we're facing right now is that it's so difficult to adopt. I mean, for every abortion that happened last year, there were two couples on the waiting list to adopt a child. Yeah. And it's so insane to me that we have these crazy regulations. Any person can sit down in a hospital, squat, squeeze a baby out. And not only will we let them keep that child, we will give them government money to do so. <laughs> yeah. And none we'll of that, to give them money. It, you can also and have that, the baby and drop it off at any emergency center and no questions asked. 
no questions yeah. asked. Not even your That's name. That's true. It's uh, and it's it's people are like, oh well, that baby might go through foster care, and foster care sucks. And I get that sometimes it does. CPS but is not only yeah, CPS and foster care. That's horrible. But yeah, but also that, we can solve alive, that problem right? by making it. Yeah, well, and not only are you alive, but we could solve that problem by making it easier to adopt. That's what drives me crazy. Yeah. Like, if, you know, someone comes along and they want to adopt a child and you put them through all these hoops uh, and then any person just squat, like squeezes a baby out and you're like, oh, let's assist you with government <laughs> money, like, even though you're a totally unfit parent. Yeah. Uh, so... Yeah, Donald Trump uh, or immigration. Like, I think we immigration whatever i kind of covered that in my video uh uh-huh. yeah immigration like I, I can understand like wanting a temporary block like I, I was originally against it but then like thinking about it no if if you're going to have a government program to bomb all of them and then when they come here you might as well have a government program to say hold on a second wait a minute <laughs> maybe you should stay over there for a little bit and then once it calms down whatever but uh definitely yeah. don't pay it i would never advocate for them to pay them to get them come here that's a horrible yeah. idea. Um, and it's also on libertarian. I, I totally agree with that. But yeah, maybe maybe a temporary block on on those particular ones. But immigration has always been a, a net benefit for for the United States, too. Um, but usually for. Yeah, well, I, here's the thing. So when it comes to immigration, there's a couple topics bundled in there. Usually people conflate immigration and illegal immigration. And the thing is, is libertarians. There's not much of a difference for us because we tend to believe that the state is imposing unreasonable regulations and whether or not a person can enter your country. That being said, um, you know, if someone's going to migrate here illegally and get government benefits, I think that's ridiculous. And that's the problem that a lot of libertarians have with illegal immigration is that you can't have open borders and a welfare state at the same time. It's just not possible. Well, those are two uh, analytically so, different things. I mean, even Hoppe, who is like the biggest ma borders, like libertarian has has you know is even saying that these are two different topics and oh no i agree not, they're different topics yeah like but, sure sure but, like but, you can say can't. that but if you're going to come over here and but you can but you can also pass a law tomorrow that says all right if you if you're not here if you weren't born here period you can't apply for any kind of social things you could you could say that but it's not going to it's not going to solve the problem at the welfare state well, I think it would. I think it would solve the problem of people coming over here and exploiting our benefits. Yeah. Well, it's 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 insolvent. Period. So, yeah. in, in, in turning, making, um, accelerating the process of its failure uh, doesn't really bother me. I don't see that as a problem. Yeah, I, I yeah. get what you're saying. <laughs> um, I, I sort of get what you're saying. My thing is that I'm not. Here's what bothers me about this discussion. I actually am in favor of immigration reform. I want people to be able to come here if they want to stay here and live here and work peacefully. What bothers me is that whenever we have this discussion, all the people on the left who claim to be oh so nuanced don't seem to understand that there's a difference between immigration and illegal immigration. They think that's, I mean, two of the exact same thing. They also don't think that there's a difference between immigrants and brown skinned people. Because whenever somebody says, I'm against illegal immigration, they say, Therefore, you're against uh, immigration in general. Therefore, yeah. you're against brown-skinned people and you're a racist. And even though I, I don't fall into that category as somebody who's against uh, illegal immigration in that sense, uh, I still think it's annoying when people are accused of racism because they think individuals should enter the country legally. Yeah, it's at best xenophobia, but it's that's not the same thing as racism it's not um, yeah not only is it not the same thing but you can be against illegal immigration but still be in favor of legal immigration and that doesn't make you a xenophobe you just think people should follow certain processes yeah and a lot of them will tell you like oh yeah i totally think that if you come here from sweden you got to go to the same process as the mexicans yes yeah. Yeah. Like, or even canada Maybe maybe not yeah. Canada because Canada is basically the fifty first state. <laughs> They're not yeah, even a real country Canada, anyway. Yeah, Canada's not real. Yeah, Canada barely exists. Yeah, and then I guess we may as well just talk about Trump. Just wrap it up with Trump. Trump Should is not I, a free market dude. I well, we I'm mentioned sorry. Trump a couple times. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But he's not a free market guy. Like he he says that like you know he he came to successful in the free market. There's nothing free market about New York real estate. Nothing. Nothing <laughs> like everything is greasing palms. You, you might be everything. Right. Yeah, yeah, everything is greasing right. palms. The dude got like a six million dollar loan. Well, translated to modern day, it's six million dollars, but it was one million dollars back then. Um, but yeah, it's about a six million dollar loans. Whoa, you get droned. 
What? Did you get droned? No. Yes, I did get droned. <laughs> you survived the droning. Okay. A gosh darn motorcycle. Yeah, like everything is greasing palms road. in New York. Everything is greasing palms. And that and he even admits it, you know. And he's never really done good anything in the the actual free market where he's saying, like, I here's a good service. I'm not asking for government handouts or protections. It's been like, what, Trump steaks? How'd that turn out? Trump vodka failure. Uh, Trump magazine failure. Uh, Trump University you know, though, scam. I, but, uh, everything has know. been a fraud. I don't know, man. Here's my thing. I I kind of get what you're saying, but Trump has so many successful properties with his name attached to them that the failures are almost inconsequential. Uh, some of them. A lot of them were failures. Taj Mahal failure. Uh, the one here in Vegas, it's uh, not, not a doing large very percentage, well. though. Not a large percentage. Hasn't he pulled? Hasn't he had way more, like way more successes than failures? Mm, not really. In really? fact, like they. Are you sure? Yeah, like if you even take like if you took that six million dollars and just threw it in a hedge fund and he just kind of lived a lavish lifestyle, he'd be doing a lot better than he would had he not invested in all these properties. There's a lot of properties. No like, way. Taj, the Taj Mahal was. Now. Does he? Yeah. How do you know? Because he told me, dude. Why, <laughs> why would he lie to me about that? There has uh, been no, investigate. There's there's been investigations uh, into his his things, and it turns out that he may be only worth two hundred fifty million dollars. Uh, Forbes okay. kind of lists him anywhere from two to nine million dollars, nine billion dollars. Excuse me. But yeah, um, but even even Ivanka has also, said yeah. like that poor guy on the street has more money than we do. <laughs> you know, like there's you know what did you Ivanka Trump. Ivana Trump. Oh yeah. yeah I, no, Ivanka, yeah. her daughter, his daughter, Ivana. Oh. I always get those two mixed up, but man, I I, I do terrible consensual things to that woman. Anyways, um, <laughs> oh, that, that's me virtue signaling again. Sorry. Anyways, um, yeah, yeah, I was gonna say, yeah, but like they when when he when they said that like you know he's probably only worth two hundred fifty million dollars. He sued them for like two point like or nine billion dollars, which he says his is his worth. And he he sued him twice and lost twice because the the court documents show that like okay he couldn't prove that he was actually worth anything more than two hundred fifty million dollars even in assets. Oh, that's kind of, yeah. So that is kind of weird. We don't really know what he's worth. Did the court rule that he can't sue them because he's not worth that much, or that he, could, he couldn't uh, prove that they were wrong? Can't sue them for he couldn't hmm. prove that they were wrong. Yeah, he might not have as much money as he says he's, but again. I, yeah. I don't know. I don't know if I buy into all that. Um, but still, like $250 million this. is doing a lot better than any of us, but it's all been greasing yeah. palms of Well, of speak Democrats. for yourself. I'm getting quite a couple dollars on Patreon now. So. Yeah. I got about $4 a month on my Patreon. I'm doing well. Dude, that's pretty yep. dope. Yep, yep, yep. Uh, I, I try not to spend it all in one place, you know. Uh, You're going to be in Trump status in no time. Yeah, I could buy like one can of caviar at Walmart. It's on sale. Dude, you could buy some green beans. <laughs> I can't eat green beans. Too much carbs. You're yeah. gross. What else? <laughs> I, what else is there to cover? Did we? <laughs> did we <laughs> what, uh, oh, I think one thing. Cover? Yeah, one other thing that he mentioned. I, I this is kind of where I stopped, and then I'm just kind of looking at. Okay, he mentioned those two things in this description. Uh, I lost my my previous notes, but he did mention that like he broke up with libertarianism. He didn't say or libertarians. When That's that right. Clear, You're right. He don't want any Spurg lords on here. Like, I'm still libertarian. He never actually yeah. said those words. And even if he did, he's like, well, he take it out of context. But anyways, go ahead. You know what's funny? <laughs> I love that he's using a relationship analogy because he just left us for somebody who's giving him more money. Yeah. Despite the fact that he constantly talks about women being gold diggers. <laughs> Steph, you projecting little hoe. But she ain't messing with we, no broke alt writers right now. <laughs> yeah, like, I'd say he no gold digger. But she dude, ain't messing true. with no broke lefties. Does that rhyme? Dude, if that he rhymes. if he married if he married a Rothschild, he'd be like, I was wrong about Central Bay. <laughs> he'd like do a whole video. Like, well, I was wrong. <laughs> Science. It's, like, it's very it's very wrong of me to not realize that Central Bay King, right? Now all these people will get triggered. And because they had bad relationships with their mother, they'll try to claim that central <laughs> banking is a bad thing. But let me tell you, no. Oh, Steffi. Oh, Steffi, yeah. Steff, Steff, but 
So, uh, are you going to make more? Uh, ra- now that we wrap that up, are you going to be making more uh, of those kind of commentaries, website reviews? Uh, yeah. And are probably. you going to make it a separate channel for that? Or are you going to have me host it? Because I can, I could do it. I'm probably just going to force you to host it. Honestly, okay, going to force me to host it. Mm-hmm. Okay. Like, I, I could, we could do the thing. I, I want to see uh, yeah. website reviews, more website reviews. That was, that was. Brilliant. All right, just. <laughs> No, what thing? What more? website did I review? I don't even remember this. This was a a pro uh, pro life or pro choice uh, article that you that uh, you. Were oh, that, did I review? Oh, yeah, that's right. Yeah, when I reviewed. You don't even remember article, what yeah. you put it on my. You don't even remember what you put on my channel, man. I was confused because I was confused. Put this on your you channel. I forget what it was. No, I was. Here you go. Do it. No, I was. <laughs> I, no, Jim, you're not listening. I was confused because you said website review. Yeah. It was like an article. I thought, like, wait, did I review his website? I thought I just did his article. I think you actually mentioned that his website looked kind of <laughs> boring, but anyway. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Saying the things that need to be said. Brilliant tagline. Oh, yeah, dude. He did. <laughs> he did. The, all of those things needed to be said. Legit. Oh, no. Oh. Oh, Audacity just almost took a crap, but we got it. We're good. Hey, dude. We're good. Did you know that pro lifers believe in bullying gay kids? Yes. They, well, you don't. You don't bro, do that. Oh, when is uh? Wait, when hold we on. Do an execution party? Excuse me. Are you virtue signaling that I should not beat gay people or bully them to death? <laughs> dude, um, when's the execution party? <laughs> yeah, like, dude, it's next week. They're gonna be frying the serial mur- serial murder. It's gonna be yes. the greatest thing ever. They're gonna televise it. Can't wait. Yeah. I wish they televised it more often. Like there, there's like only one, two or three states that still have the electric chair, but man, this is gonna be great. This is gonna be great. It's gonna be great. We're so happy. Yeah. Did you hear that Hillary's investi- under investigation again? <laughs> How many Did people you hear that? <laughs> yeah. Th- so they're gonna be frying that electric chair up like crazy. <laughs> so they're gonna die. Yeah. yeah. Like what did you? What uh, do they know about Hillary? Put him in the electric chair. <laughs> yeah. Uh, Dude, she's so spooky, man. I heard somebody mention that they found the 30,000 emails. I don't know if that's true, but if that's true, she is so screwed. Yeah. Oh, I'm going to laugh so hard if they found those emails. Yeah. It's, yeah. Dude, By the Oh, yeah. That was another thing in that video that we don't go after Hillary Clinton. We only attack Donald Trump. Crap. <laughs> Here we are. Yeah. Yeah. Like, she is the most, like, corrupt person ever, like, next to Donald yeah. Trump. Or no, no. Dude, Donald Hillary, Trump's next to no, her. No, Hillary's worse. Yeah, Hillary's way worse. Way, way worse. Like, she is horrible. I don't buy the conspiracy theories that, like, she killed people, but I think they're hilarious. <laughs> I say them anyway. <laughs> like, I don't really believe it, but. No, no. Yeah. I don't know if she's killed people, but I, I, I wouldn't be. If I found out she did, I'd be like, oh. Oh, right. okay. Like, I wouldn't be too sure. Uh, another thing. That's why this whole, like, attacking Trump for his his personal problems or attacking Hillary under her corruptions is so ineffective in this election. Like people just kind of go like, yeah, we know. Yeah. <laughs> that's so true. It's, that's not, that's not the problem. It's, it's, it's all coming down to like who we hate less, you know, who, who's got the, the worst smile, you know, who, who, who grabs <laughs> them, grabs other people the wrong way. Like that's all we care yeah. about now. Like, Oh, she kills people. Nah. Trump, you know, grabs them by nah. the, by the men. Nah. Yeah. Yeah. Exactly. We're at that point now. It's like, is, but his his cotton candy. His what did what did Penn say about his hair? It's it's cotton candy that looks like piss. It's made out of piss. Cotton <laughs> candy that look. I can't. Uh, that's I just can't do that. Yeah. yeah. Hold on two seconds. I gotta. I gotta. I gotta. Well, pee we should really we should, bad. Well, we should wrap this up. I'll, <laughs> it's been good talking to you, Seamus. It was great talking to you, Jim. All right. I'll see you, babe. <laughs> <laughs> Peace out, bro. Peace out, babe. Good. Talk. Peace out, babe. Baby. Tired of dealing with governments? Wish there was a better way of not getting busted committing victimless crimes? Tired of having to listen to your parole officer? Never again with the Bipcot NoGov Human License Wristband. This wristband has a NoGov patented NoGov hologram technologies that work on your aura chakras to fungus shui vibrational energy something something to woo state agents off of your trail. It's like they can't even see you. The best part is it actually works. It doesn't actually work. It's so easy to use. Just put it on your wrist or within three inches of your quantum sacred geometry spirit energy and commit all of the victimless crimes you want and totally get away with all of them. And by all, we mean none. 
And with the fancy Lowbirds podcast logo on the side, you'll be the life of Porkfest. And all of this could be yours for $4.99 plus $2 shipping and handling. These statements have not been evaluated by the FDA, FTC, or any other three letters. This product is not intended to prevent, defend, or protect you from any legal actions from the state. This product contains chemicals known in the state of California to cause cancer and birth defects or other reproductive harm. Move to New Hampshire, Nevada, or anywhere else that isn't a shithole and you'll probably be fine. These bands are total bullshit. They don't actually work. If this needs to be said to you, you should probably drink bleach. This is just neat looking merchandise that can start an interesting conversation with yet to be libertarians. Order today at lulberts.com. Are you sick of government lackeys who say you didn't build that? Are you tired of elitists like Barack Obama and Al Gore taking credit for the web while trying to take over the web? Are you disgusted by experts whose concept of the internet is that it's a series of tubes? Take back the free market of computing by encouraging software developers to adopt the BIPCOT no-gov license. The BIPCOT no-gov license allows any use or modification except by governments. Go to BIPCOT.org. That's Bravo, India, Papa, Charlie, Oscar, Tango, dot org. For some reason in, in this country, and in most of the Western world, it's okay to just dodge. Hey, this is Michael Dean from the Freedom Fiends Radio Show. Computer programmer Derek Slopey and I have created Fiend Phone. I'm using Fiend Phone right now to talk with and record one of my co-hosts in real time. Take it, Davi. Hey, this is Davi Barker, and I'm a thousand miles away from Michael, but we sound like we're in the same room. We sure do, Davi. So, Davi, please tell the nice people more about Fiend Phone. Fiend Phone is free, no-gov software that opens up a global world of possibilities for collaborative, high-quality, remote voice media production, and I'm digging it. People can try Fiend Phone right now at FiendPhone.com, but we're also raising money to vastly improve Fiend Phone and vastly improve independent talk media worldwide. So go to FiendPhone.com to help out. Who will build the audio roads? We will, with your help. That's FiendPhone.com. F-E-E-N-P-H-O-N-E.com. Foxtrot, Echo, Echo, November, Phone.com. Fiend Phone. I never knew remote audio could be this good. <laughs> 